Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a joy to be here. Now, my topic is a simple one. And it's a topic that I want to challenge you squarely on. Grace over grind. Unlocking the success code. Now, as a child growing up, I always heard my mother say, Father, have your own. Mother, have your own. Blessed are the child that find their own. Now, for my international audience, I will translate for you. Your father has his own. A mother, she has worked and she has her own. Now, as a child, it's time for you to work and find your own. Now, for me, that statement began to position me as the last of five. That it was important to pursue, to persevere, and more importantly, be productive. But can I propose something to you? What I've learned is that it's not necessarily how hard you work, but it's the grace that follows the work. I want to say that one more time. Sometimes grace can take you places where grind could never lead you. I want to leave with you three keys that has guided me to understand that where work has its place, where diligence has its home, where hard work has its haven, but with equal proportion or sometimes in greater measure, grace will always win the race. You see, I've realized that great things sometimes flow so effortlessly, eloquently, without any announcements. And it still has its scientific mystery. For instance, the sun is glorious, a powerful star that burns, but never announces itself. It casts its light, it provides its warmth, it reminds us of a mystery that the greatest scientists still are trying to understand. Yet the sun moves so gracefully. When you think of migration, birds knowing when to leave, there is this inner in other fine-tuned element Biologists call it instincts. Psychologists call it a sense of knowing. Physicists call it intelligent design. I call it a still, soft voice that guides you to your purpose. Number three things I want to share with you and challenge you that as you diligently pursue your goals, as you feverishly work on the things that you know that, you know that you're called to do, help me, allow me to introduce one concept laid out in three principles that may get you there faster, get you there more happier, and at the same time, get you there in such a way that you make an impact that you will never even dream that you could have. Now, number one, expectation. You see, I want to say to you, stop setting goals, but set expectations. Now, for me, I've learned that expectation is the living space for the impossible. You see, in 2008, I was a student. And I remember that summer, everyone went away and they were going back to their homes. And I was in my dorm 
doing what most students do very, very late in the semester, checking your school email. Now, I hardly check my school email. I remember sitting there, looking at my emails, thousands of unread emails, and I saw this email that said scholarship to go to Canada. All expense paid. And I was excited. When I opened up the email, the deadline was two weeks ago. And right there, I said I was too late. But a still small voice said to me, apply. And as that word washed over my soul, I felt high expectation. I applied. And by the Monday, I got a phone call. ID withheld. Now, some of you here, you know if somebody looking for you, you're owing money or something. You'd be like... <laughs> I'm not answering that number. <laughs> no, thankfully I wasn't owing anybody money, right? So I answered. And I heard this strange voice. And the voice said to me, Hi, good day. Is this Mr. Henry? Now right there, usually some of us will say, Who's calling? <laughs> Am I right? Yes. And that still soft voice said, Behave yourself. And I replied and I said, yes, it's Mr. Henry. How can I help you? And the individual said, I am the director of the International Affairs Unit. And I'm calling to let you know that you have been granted an international scholarship for one year to do your research in Canada. Now, I was shocked. I was so shocked that my stomach froze. As a matter of fact, whatever was digesting had to take a pause. <laughs> and in that moment, before I could have asked the question, why me? He immediately said, you were the only student that applied for this scholarship. <laughs> now listen. I'm like, out of 12,000 students on the main campus, not one person applied for that scholarship. My question to you, have you ever seen an opportunity and counted yourself out before? We've all done it before. Probably someone is more qualified. They may not choose me. I'm probably too short. I'm probably too poor. Nobody will choose me. But that's still soft voice. That intelligent design guided me to the place of my destiny. But what was about to meet me was of great mystery that this second key, grace over grind, this key formula to success, I had to employ. I resigned from my job, I gave it to my boss and I said, Ayo Pancho, I'm out of here. And they were excited for me, knowing that I'm about to go to a place that I've never been before. But after I resigned, two weeks after, I called in Canada at the university concerning the scholarship. And they said to me that the public service presently is on strike. And it is a government scholarship which has to go through public servants approvals. So we do not know when the money would be released. Now you could imagine this half student, because I'm no longer a student. You know what it is sometimes to feel like you're half pregnant? You're carrying something, but it hasn't even made form. And in that place, I began to doubt and question myself. Did this still soft voice lead me the right way? 
But in that moment, in that conversation, I heard that voice again said to me, go forward. I hung up the phone after hearing that news and I booked my ticket to Canada. I shook while I clicked enter. <laughs> but as I booked the ticket, I heard a still voice say, do you remember that business conference your friend's been telling you about? I said, yes. Go to that conference. And I started to argue with myself. I'm not even a student. I don't have money. That ticket is even more money. If I'm carrying suitcase, that's two more luggage I have to pay check-in. Where will I find the money? And I heard that voice from the inside, that instinct that said to me, go, go, go. So I booked the ticket reluctantly to Las Vegas. And as I stood there, a call came from the administrator and they said to me, we have some more bad news for you. You may have to join us in the next semester the following year. And I said nothing. I was silent because if I had opened my mouth, I would have walked myself out of my dream and probably even convinced myself by agreeing with her and say, I understand. Sometimes you just need to Because in that moment, as I zipped my lip, I was locking my dream on the inside as I was praying on the inside that it will not seep out. For me, my silence was my way of holding my dream so tight that it will not escape me because I knew that still soft voice said, go. Now, in a sense, as a child, we all know that we must go past our experiences. And all those experiences I had, I had to fight the experience that I've learned, the things that I've earned. And in that moment, I had to be like a child and believe again. Trust again. Be patient again. Be loving to myself again. And in that very moment, not only did I buy tickets, I bought jackets, sweaters, winter socks. Then I called the dorm room and when I called the dorm, they said they had the worst flood in 30 years. Students were being held and communities were being held in the dorm, dormitory as an emergency shelter. And they said they don't know if I'll have a place to stay. Now when everything is piling up against you, my question to you, will you still believe? When everything is looking like it's going in the opposite direction, will you still believe? When everything, the winds are blowing in one direction and it's easy to blow with it, will you still believe? Three months after my phone rang and the administrator called and said, Mr. Henry, we have good news for you. The scholarship has been approved, but I know it's too late because it's the semester starts in a week and I know you'll have to make preparations and I know you'll have to do this I know you have to do that so we'll pick it up next before she said next year I said I am ready <laughs> I want to leave with you a charge that even as you pursue love finance career and education even as you work diligently and you labor long nights early mornings listen to that still small voice listen because like all of the greatest things that have been created 
that voice will guide you to your greatest experience. An experience that you could never work for, never earn for, an experience that you could never sweat for, because that still soft voice guides you to greatness. Eight years later, that voice allowed me to live a life that I could not even dream that was possible. Some of us know it as geo-arbitrage, being able to be planted in one nation while serving in another. I've been able to help people craft and discover their innocence, their significance, and more importantly, the grace that will help them over their grind. So I say to you, stop doubting yourself and start daring yourself. I dare you to love again. I dare you to try again. I dare you to trust and believe again. I dare you to take your titles to the side and begin to start again. Because when you choose to move, with grace over grind, when you choose to separate yourself from the troubled talk and the discount dialect that says, I am not worth it. When you choose over the hardship mentality and choose grace, you will discover a life that you could never think, dream, or imagine. I invite you. I inspire you. I've just come around with my sand in my bag and the sun in my heart to disrupt you and choose grace over grind.